Bundesliga predictions, round 27. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Very Biased Opinions, Bundesliga predictions. We are coming back hot from a big week. Ian came in at 55% of correct uh, predictions. I came in at 66% correct predictions. Both of us at a perfect score. So keep listening, keep liking, please keep subscribing, keep following us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we just got over 4,000 hours of views the first time in a calendar year. That's pretty exciting. A uh, quick, couple quick shout outs. I'd like to thank Johnny Talks Bundesliga. Uh, he's got a great channel. Uh, he predicts Bundesliga matches as well. He's on a, all over our wall. Really appreciated that. Um, Eden Jets, thank you for commenting. Uh, Khalid Ali, thank you for commenting. I can't say this name. Cheshuto Yepto, thank you for commenting. Anonymous1337. Great story about uh, how Paderborn were lost in the Bundesliga in 2014. Uh, and then got relegated to the third division and came back up. Uh, I have another good story. Yes? Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. No, oh, that's it. You're out. Uh, Sandeep Jakar, thank you for putting your predictions in. Shane O'Donnell, really well done. You got that Wolfsburg result bang on. Uh, let me just check if there's anyone else I need to reply to. No, Sonny the Snowball, thank you. You're all over our wall as well. And without further gilding of the lily, Ian, it's time to do some predictions. Lead me in to match the first. And what a match I have to start with, Thomas. It's a good old-fashioned Berlin derby. Her for Berlin versus one dot union Berlin. Well, Ian, what an appropriate Berlin derby. It's the East versus the West, the good versus the bad, though I'm not quite sure who good or bad is in this. It is a proper mid-table derby coming out here. Hertha dominated Hoffenheim in their previous match. It was 3-0, but it probably could have been 4. They did really well in that game. We expected more from Hoffenheim, but they didn't bring it. But Hertha were really good. Kuna scored a superb finish for his third goal in his last three games. What a run as well, along the touchline, straight over the keeper. It was great. Uh, last video, we actually had an error. Uh, Hertha signed Christoph Piatek for £22 million, I think, and we forgot to, we left that one out. Uh, he was on a really poor run of form at Milan before they signed him in the first place, and he didn't start this match. Honest, personally, I'd be surprised if he had a huge effect on this team, but we did fail to mention it, so there you go. There's a bit more history about Hertha Berlin for the last six months. The Labadia reign has begun with a win. Uh, Jarstein was great at the back. Is this that sort of big 3-0 start for the final eight games or whatever, something's going to really push Hertha up the table. It kind of feels like it is. Um, they are traditionally actually less successful at home than they are away, which is a bit weird. But they are unbeaten now in six away matches, and their club record is eight. So they're enjoying quite a good season, and I actually see it continuing here. I think that they're going to beat Union Berlin 2-0. Yeah, it's another big derby game. It's another shame that the fans aren't going to be allowed in the stadium to watch it because that would have been a raucous atmosphere. Uh, Union, I think it's the first time these two have had the derby in the Bundesliga. And Union won the first one when they played at home 1-0. It was a very tight game, as you would expect this one to be as well. Yes, Hertha did win 3-0, Thomas, but I think the game could have been a little bit closer than that. Hoffenheim, well, both sides missed a host of chances. And I just got the feeling that whoever got the first goal in that one was going to run out winners. Hertha got it, and yeah, they did, they did take advantage of that. That's for sure. Probably the biggest surprise in the round for me was them winning 3-0. Really yeah, I don't, neither of us saw that happening, did we? Difficult to really judge the state of the union, you could say. Um, you know, they came up against Bayern Munich, and Bayern, it wasn't a, a full flow in Bayern Munich performance, but they did enough. They, they looked a level above what Union Berlin looked. Yeah. Very, although the game was quite tight and they could have taken the lead early, it was a very sloppy penalty to give away. Uh, Super Tich, I mean, just clear the ball. Clear the ball. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? You expect like, more from a player like Super Tich. Like, that was my one thought when that happened was that is not the player who makes that mistake there. I mean, he's just clearly not seen him run in and nick it and then he just kicked him, hasn't he? But then, you know, they're always chasing the game from then on. And, they, you know, they, they stay competitive. They only went down 2-0. Um... Everything in everything in my fibre of being, Thomas, says this is going to be a draw. Um, however, I'm going to go Union Berlin to nick it. 1-0. There you have it. Neither of us can just can't agree on anything, Ian. We can't agree on anything. I agreed too much last week and it cost me. Two sides that really failed to entertain uh, last week. It's SC Paderborn. 07 versus the 1899 Hoffenheim. So, Tom, as you rightly pointed out, these two teams were horrible 
last weekend. I think there was a very few games that I didn't enjoy. And I must say, what a breath of fresh air it was to have football back and Bundesliga football back. So thank you very much, Germany, for bringing that to us. But Paderborn versus Dusseldorf or Dusseldorf uh, Paderborn was not one of those matches. It was nil-nil draw with two of the worst sides in the league and that absolutely showed. But somehow Paderborn came out with a nil-nil draw on it despite uh, Dusseldorf peppering the frame of the goal on multiple occasions. Uh, even though Paderborn could have nicked it late on, they didn't offer much in the game. But look at their form. It's weird. It doesn't doesn't belay what I saw at the weekend. One win and no. four draws, unbeaten in the last five games. Um, yeah, Hoffenheim, they, they ended up on the end of a bad result against Hertha. I don't know what to pick in this one. From you look at the history, Paderborn have never beaten Hoffenheim. I don't know what the sample size is for that. But from what I saw on one game, Paderborn deserve to be at the bottom of the league this season. They, they they don't look like they offer a lot going forward and I can't see them winning this game. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Hoffenheim win. Yeah, I'm having a really hard time looking past Hoffenheim. Obviously, uh, before last week's matches, I think we both actually expected more from Hoffenheim. I think we both had them nicking it against Hertha. They were, and I know you and I may slightly disagree, but 3 0 is not a good scoreline to have in your first match back. Uh, it, it, it's not, but it was very, um, you know, they, they just got done by two very quick goals. At yeah. The start of the second they just found their way back into it. Yeah, uh, Hoffenheim have won in six matches now. Of that, I think they have five losses on the sheet, which is pretty depressing. They've lost eight of their 14 home fixtures this season, so quite honestly, they may be relishing a chance to go away to another city and play a football match. I know Bauman could keep them going in this match, but they've scored seven and conceded zero in their last five matches against Paderborn. Uh, despite only scoring 35 goals this season, I think this is their chance to get a couple. I am going to go with a 2-0 Hoffenheim win in this. SC Freiburg versus Werder Bremen. Well, Ian, um, I'm going to highlight the shit show that is Werder Bremen, a Bundesliga legend that is just dying a painful death right now. They are possibly the worst side that came back to football last week. They're pushing a Schalke team that couldn't even be bothered to turn up against Dortmund. Their defending was nothing less than appalling. You can see why they're in the relegation zone. Anyone watching that game, it doesn't matter how good Labour Coos and are at holding the ball. They can't mark anybody anywhere. Um, their goalkeeper, Jiri Pavlenka, pre-match comes out and he goes, this is our second chance, we're going to avoid relegation. He must be furious at the defenders. The second Kai Havertz goal, where the defenders are three foot either side of him, and he gets the header right in front of the goal. Like, the, what are you no, supposed to do? Nobody moves. It was, lit, and there was him... so many, every time the ball went in the net, the coach looked depressed like he knew it was coming, and the players did as well. They instantly, the ball went in the back of the net, and they're just like, oh. there's no, there's no passion, there's no fire, there were no inquests, no one seemed to care that they'd ship four goals. Um, they've conceded the most goals from corners in the Bundesliga this season. It was in full, full show in this match. Three of the four goals they conceded were headers. Wide open headers. And Kai Havertz is not the tallest player on earth, and he got two of them. And the first one was pretty wide open as well, where they just not touch tight. I'm also giving up 21 points from winning positions this year. Not that at any point they looked like they're in a winning position against Leverkusen. Uh, Bittencourt actually quite a decent game. He got an assist, but they're de defending. It, it's just awful. There's no tracking. There's no effort. There's no... No one's turned on. Uh, the manager genuinely looked like he was just waiting for his papers and to leave the club. Uh, they've now conceded 59 goals and only scored 28. That's more than any club in Britain has conceded this year. It is downright appalling. Uh, obviously, you'll talk about Freiburg a bit more. They really impressed me. They're very organized. They did a really good job holding and trying to control the match. But I, I think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do Bremen, especially because earlier in the season it was a two-all draw. But I just can't see them. I can't see anyone not rolling this Bremen team. I'm going to go for 3 0 to Freiburg. It's hard not to think of Bremen getting another pace in here, really. Uh, absolutely agree with everything what you said. It, oh, my God. Just to go on about the defending once again, you can clearly hear because there's no one in the stands. You can hear a lot of the players talking. There was no talking, there's no communication in the back line when 
um, well, whenever they were defending a, a set piece, it was laughably bad. Uh, you would not expect that from defenders at a high, at a high level such as Bundesliga football. Uh, what do you get from Bremen? They look okay in build-up play, but they look pretty toothless and they look miserable at the back. This is not the team you want to come up against now. You don't want to come up against a well-drilled, well-regimented Freiburg side that themselves have just got a very impressive draw against Leipzig. Yes, they had to ride their luck a little bit at times, as you would expect, but they took the lead and um, they damn near nearly held on to it and won the game. They nearly and probably should have got a winner. It was a very, very marginal VAR call. Was his arm his end. shoulder again? That's one thing I haven't missed is these VAR calls. Yeah, it was his shoulder just leaning over the line, which ruled out them getting the second uh, spot. But they, again, they look a decent side especially from set pieces, and that is going to be something they're going to be targeting Bremen in this, who just look like they can't defend. And I'll just go one less than you, but I can't see Bremen scoring 2-0 Freiburg, who are giving themselves a shot of getting into a European spot. And now it's time, Ian, for the match of the day, because it's Borussia Mönchengladbach versus Bayer 4 Leverkusen. Absolutely right, Thomas. This is, should be an excellent match. It's two sides who thoroughly impressed on the first game back from the lockdown. Uh, Munch and Gladbach had a 3-1 win against Frankfurt. They pretty much wrapped the game up in the first 10 minutes with two goals. And, and then when they were just able to sit back, invite Frankfurt onto them, and then they just hit them on the counter-attack again and again and again. I really like the way they moved the ball through the thirds. They seem to it. They, they, do, they turn defence into attack so quickly. Marcus Duran, who we highlighted last week, he got a goal. Ben Zabini was probably the player of the match. He got a goal and an assist. Probably the most surprising thing was they didn't keep a clean sheet, which will, which will annoy Jan Sommer. Uh, but basically a thoroughly impressive and easy win for Gladbach, as it was for Leverkusen as well. Uh, you're going to talk more about Leverkusen, but one thing I thought, they were a bit like... Um, you know when you watch a TV show or a movie when they do like an amnesia plot? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, they, it was almost like that at the start for Lazy Coos and they were out of their rhythm. They'd almost like forgotten how to play. And then it was, yeah. was all of a sudden it just clicked back in slowly. And by the end of it, they were completely back to their normal selves. It, it reminded it like me of got, Dortmund. They got, they got one. Yeah, a little bit. It was like yeah. they got one goal and it was like, something seems familiar. And then the second <laughs> one went in. It was like, oh, there it is. And then they just ran rampant. Um, so this one, oh, God, it's hard to predict. It's third versus fifth. Oh. And what I saw, I thought Leverkusen were more impressive. Um, split the difference. Split the difference and go for a draw. One apiece. You're almost really happy they're coming up against each other, but kind of sad because you want them to both be successful. They were so much fun to watch. They're such young teams. Uh, obviously, Leverkusen destroyed Bremen for one. Uh, Bosch Bowl in full show. They just ripped them apart. Uh, Diaby had two assists. Havertz had two goals. These two players are just like rocket fuel propelling this team up the lead. Uh, they're now in fifth. They're only a point behind Leipzig. Havertz has four goals and three assists in his last seven games. No one is on better scoring or assisting form at this point. They scored 49, conceded 31. They literally cannot stop scoring, and they barely concede. They now have the fifth highest percentage possession per percentage stat in Europe. They're only behind Bayern, City, PSG, and Barca. This is a team that doesn't give the ball away, makes really good use of it. How they managed to just rip Diaby out of P like, what are PSG doing giving these players away? Maybe they're that talented, I don't know. Uh, and they're just, they have so many good young players coming through. Florian Wirtz came in, made his debut, 17 years old in 15 days. That makes him the, their youngest player in Bundesliga history and the third youngest ever in Bundesliga history overall. Uh, they've already picked up 22 points away from home. They lost to Borussia earlier in the season 2-1. I don't see that happening this week. I've got Leverkusen winning this. There was something about their imperious style of form. I really like Mönchengladbach, but Kai Havertz, man, he's a difference maker and he's on incredible form. 3-1 to Leverkusen. Yeah, um, just to say, it's not surprising why you've had reports but just before the game, actually, reports of like people closing in to try and sign Havertz and Leverkusen are desperately trying to like bat them all away, saying, "Get where he's our player. We don't want him talking to anybody." And it's not a surprise they're trying to like uh, keep keep him on there because, God, man, he was impressive. He was really good. I know he's not the tallest player he's scoring headers. He's just it's good uh, in it, the air though. Good, good for his size. He's really good in the air. I know it's easy to say after he scored two headers, but I just listened to the commentary. They were talking about how he's good in the air. Him and, him and Diaby, I just, those two players I think can be really hard to play against. 
FC Schalke 04 versus FC Augsburg. Ian, I couldn't be happier. You've allowed me to talk about Bremen and Schalke in the same video. Holy shit, how terrible were Schalke? They were awful. In arguably, they twice a year they play the biggest match of their year, the Riviera Derby. Three years ago, they were able to equalize from 4-0 down, but there was no chance of that happening. 4-0 was not... Oh, it was terrible. Dortmund ran rampant over them. Harrit was MIA. Dortmund's defense barely even got challenged in that match. No one seemed to even be able to like move the ball forward with any control. They were giving it away. They don't look fit, and they had problems during the stoppage. We know Harriet got fined by the club for having a party. This club doesn't look together, and it doesn't look ready for the battle. I think they're going to totally drop away. They could easily end up in the bottom half of the table. They're not going to get relegated, but they're not going to win anything either, as far as I can see. This is their longest winless run under Wagner. They've now drawn four and lost four. They haven't won in eight games. And they're coming up against a team they should be able to handily beat, but they've only scored four goals in 2020. Their goalkeeper was abysmal. Schubert, he was, mm. he was just all over the park, near post goals. Couldn't uh, kick either. He couldn't kick. Yeah. And yeah, they just gave the ball away. They play a 3-4-3, or at least they did in this game against Dortmund, but they didn't look like they could handle balls coming through the middle or the wings, which in a 3-4-3 means you're pretty much just wide open to be eaten alive. Uh, their form has been terrible, but so has Augsburg. And I'm having a hard time trying to pick a winner, so I'm going to do what you did earlier and split the difference. I'm going for a nil-nil draw. I'm going to be completely speculative in this one, and I am going to back. I'm going to say the score earlier on. I'm going to I'm going to back Schalke to win this one by two goals to one. I just think they were thoroughly embarrassed in the last game, and there'll be a bit of reaction from the players. Augsburg were pretty good against Wolfsburg. They went a goal down, but they were unlucky to lose. It was a last minute goal. Uh, they themselves had one ruled out uh, with VAR, um, which was even worse than the one we talked about earlier, where a guy was just almost. It was one of those ones where. Um, the guy was in front of the keeper. Yeah. And he did he yeah. wasn't he didn't touch the ball, but it was whether he'd interfere in with play or not. Um, but they pretty much scored the first pretty much two identical goals, really. I know the second one was ruled out. It was both from free kicks, um, where they you know they got the better of their of their the Wolfsburg defenders on that occasion. Yeah, but they were they were probably better they were better than I expected. They were better than their form suggests and where their league position suggests, but Again, on the same token, they weren't fantastic by any rule as well. Um, so I'm back in Schalke. I don't think it's going to be a classic by any means. 2-1. Yeah, and I hate to say it. I'm going to have to change my prediction to 1-0. I totally forgot that Augsburg haven't won this since 2015. Uh, so I'm going to gonna stroll back the clock. I'm going to go 1-0 to Schalke. You've convinced me. Thank you for, for that, that. For that, for that, Tom, when it comes to match day, you've got to watch Augsburg versus Schalke instead of our next game. It's match of the day two with VFL Wolfsburg versus Borussia Dortmund. Is that me Mark Chapman's presenting this one? Nobody really looks more impressive than Dortmund. I know we talked about um, Leverkusen, but for me, Dortmund were just amazing. As soon as Haaland made that very, very difficult finish look incredibly easy, they just never looked back. They turned on the style and they thoroughly smashed Schalke to the point where the referee, I'm sure he even blew up 10 minutes early, just to <laughs> let Schalke off. Um, Wolfsburg, they snuck past Augsburg by two goals to one. Yeah, well, they weren't great, but that's arguably what good sides do. When you're not playing your best, you find a way to win. I don't know if you've seen it, Tom, but Renato Stefan, I think he scored one of the greatest headed, headed goals I've ever seen. Really? I haven't been that impressed by a header since like Van Persie in the World Cup all those years ago. Um, oh, it's just a brilliant guy. He's Edge of the box, bullet header. You don't expect him yeah. to like power it in the top corner from there, especially from a header. It was a wonderful goal. They looked a bit susceptible from free kicks and set pieces, um, but as I say, they found a way to win. Again, it was another good goal. Uh, Kevin Mababu, who looks really impressive down the... He got a lot of mm. pace, attacks down the right. He put a great ball in, and uh, Jinchek, he couldn't really miss, really. So, although they weren't great, they did score two good goals, and... I, Hard to look past Dortmund. I mean, come on, let's be fair. They were so good. Um, I think they will beat Wolfsburg. I think it'll end up being... I'm, I think I'm even being kind to giving Wolfsburg a goal, to be honest. I'm going to say it's 3-1 to Dortmund. Yeah, when I was doing this, I kept thinking, like, Wolfsburg, we got a goal. Wolfsburg, we got a goal. Um, 
Dortmund have won eight of their last nine Rook Runda matches. Uh, Rook Runda being the German like Bundesliga word for second half of the season matches. So match days are 18 to 34. The last time they did this, they ended as champions. This time it's going to be a lot harder as a run. Thorgan Hazard was nothing sort of short of phenomenal in that game. Honestly, it was like watching his brother play the game. He was incredible. He's only in the team because Reyna had to come off injured pre-match and warm up. And him and Brandt were such a thorn in the side of Schalke with Holland just as high up the pitch as he could be on the end of everything. They were freaking awesome. Hazard has got to play this match because his form in the Bundesliga has been just it's been incredible. And it's it's so funny. It looks like he's finally coming of age. It's just taking a little bit longer. Uh, Alderon Sancho probably finally getting a game. I think he didn't get included in the last one because they didn't think he was properly up to fitness yet. But you can assume that they're going to want him in this run in. Uh, Schalke were actually so bad, I actually thought it brought Dortmund down and made them worse, especially that first 20 minutes where a goal hadn't been scored and it looked like Dortmund were having a hard time finding any urgency because their opponents were just stood still doing nothing for most of it or giving the ball away. I think Wolfsburg are going to be a much harder test, but I think because of that, we're going to get a really entertaining match. Unfortunately, I think it will be the same as their match in November. I think Wolfsburg are going to go down 3-0. Yeah, what do you think, um, as you said about Sancho, but they also didn't have Marco Royce. They still found a great way to win. It's unbelievable. <laughs> no. It's unbelievable. It, that it's, team uh... is so talented. The Bundesliga, I'm so glad we've gotten a chance to like highlight it, look at it, and enjoy this. Because Leverkusen, Mönchengladbach, Dortmund, even what Bayern are doing, this is a really good league. FSV Mainz 05 versus RB Leipzig. Ian, I'd like to talk to you about the least inspiring team I watched this weekend. Not because they were bad, but because I was sat there going, how the hell are you guys in the title race? Um, Leipzig have only lost three times this season, and yet still found a way to draw their ninth match of the year against Freiburg. And in the process, made themselves look like the most blunted sword I'd ever seen. They're now seven points behind Bayern. They were toothless against Freiburg. I think Werner drew one good save from the goalkeeper and they got a goal from Poulsen, but outside that I was really unimpressed. Uh, and only VAR, only VAR managed to pull a draw from the jaws of defeat because I have no idea how he, how coach ended up being offside. I thought, I, I actually thought it wasn't they were coach, beat. was it? Robin Cox was it? wasn't off coach. It was the guy before him who headed it back. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's, it, it was poor. Um, Lookman, uh, once of Everton, actually, I thought looked really good and he was quite creative. He played quite a few decent through balls. It was, it was when it came to the final third, they just could not get a ball into the right L position. Lookman player. missed a chance at the start of the second half and it looked like his confidence was a bit shattered Shatter. after that. Yeah. On paper, might stand absolutely no chance. They were pasted this uh, on the 2nd of November, 8-0 by Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig completed 600 passes against Freiburg, who are a good team that in their own half exert a lot of pressure. I'm really afraid for Mainz in this. Because this Leipzig team, even if they come out and play average, are going to batter them about the pitch. Uh, Mainz already conceded 55 goals this season. So I've got Mainz losing this one 5-0. Wow. Do you know what, Thomas? I... No team impressed me as much as Mainz impressed me. And I know that, that sounds really silly. Because, That's a lie. No, it is a little bit, but it's like, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I didn't have any preconceptions of what Mainz might be like as a side. And mm. I thought they were really good against Cologne. I thought the way they play the game, that game was thoroughly entertaining from start to finish for me. They just, they, they never stopped pressing. They never stopped trying. They never, they went 2-0 down. They never gave up and they found a way back into the game. They could have won it as well. Uh, I, I just was like played a lot better than what their league position would show. Uh, and that was why I was just really impressed by them. Um, in the game against Cologne, you just had a feeling that if they could get a goal, they would go on to get that equaliser. It's exactly what happened. And the goals they scored were excellent. Um, when the, the, the first one was a, a great move. The second one was a wonderful run and finish. Have they got enough to bother this Leipzig side? Probably not. I don't think it's going to be 5-0, though, although they will be a wounded animal. Um, and they certainly didn't look that great against the Freiburg side. So, unfortunately, Mainz, I am going to back Leipzig. I think it will be 3 -0. 
to the to Germany's favourite side, RB Leipzig. And let me just end this with a little joke, Thomas, by saying, if that Everton player that's on loan at Leipzig, if he's running in on goal and he shoots instead of like passing to Werner, do you think they shout, "Look, man"? So VBO are looking for a new co-host this uh, this summer. <laughs> Um, really, really quick note to you, Ian, actually. The amount of goals scored last weekend has now taken the Bundesliga to 3.1 goals on average per game, which makes it the highest scoring Bundesliga season yet. And that brings us to the grandstand better match tip of the day, because it's FC Cologne versus Fortuna Dusseldorf. Ian, tell the people the grandstand better's thing. Firstly, Tom, I'm devastated that you missed the one at the front of one. Oh, no! I'm crestfallen by that, but I will soldier on and I will say that once again, Grandstand Betters bring you this unbelievable tip for the match day of round 27, where they are going over two and a half goals for this game, just like they were successful last week. I thoroughly expect them to be successful this week. If you're not checking out Grandstand Betters, what the hell are you doing? Their details are on the screen. We've got details down below in the description. Get over there, back their tips, win yourself some money. Everybody's happy. So I'll start with Cologne. As I've just mentioned, by waxing Lyrical over Mainz, they played this wonderful game where they drew two each. Uh, they'll be disappointed with that, though, after lead, um, leading 2-0 and throwing it away. But Sometimes in football, you've just got to look at it and say it was a wonderful game of football. Football was the winner on that occasion. Uh, but they are a very good side and they're usually good on their home patch. They were probably sorely missing the fans and their beloved mascot, the Goat, who I can't remember their name, but he's the one that normally drives them on to victory. They'll be hoping to, this time around, get, get it back to winning ways because they were in good form before the break and they're probably one of those sides that didn't want it to happen. Uh, Oof was very good for them. He scored a penalty. He actually won the penalty and scored it. Uh, but Cordova was a bit of a damp squid. He had chances in the second half to win the game and um, he couldn't find the game. There were a lot of like scrambles in the box, so maybe he was a little bit unlucky. But they're coming up against the Dusseldorf side who couldn't even be a very, very bad Panderborn, Pan, Paderborn side. I always say it wrong. So I Padawan. Expect, Padawan side. So I am expecting Cologne to win this one. And that's just how we say it in the UK. I know it's cold, but we say Cologne. If anyone's wondering. Uh, well, okay. And I think, I think Cologne will win this. I think they'll win three goals to nil. Dusseldorf have a good striker in Ruin Hennings, and he's got 11 goals this season. They've actually left him on the bench the second straight game. Uh, the first time they've done that in ages. Obviously, the caveat is there's a seven-week corona break, but he hadn't scored in 2020. Can we expect to see him starting a match soon? Well, you chance? say that. Again, you just said, but, you know, before the weekend, Haaland hadn't scored for two months. Yeah. Neither had Hazard. Neither had, like, Lewandowski. Yeah, but he hasn't scored in four months. Yeah, Twice but, that you know, time. As it's supposed to, they're supposed to be better players. They haven't scored. And I know that's because they you know they haven't played, but still, stats well, my, are stats. You can tell Ian likes my stats with that comment. Uh, they strike the woodwork four times uh, against Paderborn, so you can expect them to be unlucky. But before that match, they'd actually only strike the woodwork twice all season. So they were getting it all out in one game, hit it as much as you can, it? get it over with. Uh, they've only lost one of their seven matches against Rosler. They un, under Rosler, they don't like to lose. Uh, I think their one loss was against Munchen Gladbach. They're doing well in the cup. Unfortunately for them, they are coming up a good against a good Cologne side and a Cologne side you really think could win. Uh, Dusseldorf, they're kind of like the West Bromwich Albion in their league. They come up, they go down. They come up, they go down. They come up. Guess where they go in? They go down. I think they're at least in the playoff relegation zone for this season. I have Cologne winning. I don't think it's going to be as high scoring as you do. I've got Cologne to win 1-0. Okay, it's the last match, if not the main event. Of course, Oxford United and Man United are not in it. But Thomas, lead us into the final match. Bayern Munich versus Eintracht Frankfurt. Thomas, we come to this game and it is Eintracht Frankfurt against the machine that is Bayern München. They rounded out a very routine win against Union Berlin by two goals to nil. They barely got out of third gear, let's be fair. But they are going to need that and a hell of a lot more against a wounded Eintracht Frankfurt team because they are not going to be able to lay a glove on a side that beat them 5-1 earlier on in the season. Yes, 
they've been they've not been in great form. Uh, they've lost four out of their last five, including losing to an excellent Borussia Mönchengladbach side. But they were caught a little cold in that one. Just coming back after the, you know, they've had a long break. I'm not sure what the other side have done, but I know they've had a long two month break and they just were a little bit slow to hit their straps. And they've been waiting for this one. They've been waiting a long time to come up against this amazing Bayern Munich side. And they're going to cause the upset of all upsets. And my prediction is that Bayern Munich will win 3 0. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you, Ian. I've really missed those little uh, random assaults on my sanity and then just dropping the hammer. Let me quickly state that it's Daichi Watch, everybody. This is a thing. I'm expecting a graphic, Ian. It's Daichi Watch. We are waiting for Frankfurt's Japanese striker, Daichi, Daichi, to score his first Bundesliga goal. So, second straight top, second straight round. It's Daichi Watch, ladies and gentlemen. But is, he the, is he the guy you were talking about that looked the most greediest player I've ever seen in my life? Uh, possibly? Um, you were talking about a young uh, striker, uh, striker last week who scored loads of goals but hadn't scored any Oh, in Europe goals. in the Cup. Yeah, that's him. That's him. But look, I digress. Let's talk about Bayern Munich. It's hard to see this um, this Bayern side not looking for revenge, especially the way the Germans work. Uh, conceding five, but also losing Boateng to a red card off, like less than 10 minutes in. Um, they beat Union in their first match back, 2-0. Pretty routine victory. Bayern just looked back to their imperious form. It just looked... It was one of those standard matches that if we hadn't had the stoppage, we'd be like, yeah, pretty solid win, 2-0, blah, blah, blah. Uh, their previous match marked the 50th goal under Flick's era in just 16 matches, which makes him the highest scoringest coach to ever coach Bayern Munich through their first 16 games. Yes, if that's not a really pointless stat, I don't know what is, because I don't believe 16 games is a barometer of anything, but they score three, three goals a game under him, so it's pretty good. Komen, Hernandez, and Perisic all started on the bench for Bayern. It is hard to look past them against anybody except essentially Dortmund. Uh, they haven't lost in their last 12 Bundesliga matches. They're four points clear, which is now their biggest lead of the season. Lewandowski now has 26 goals in 26 games, and we both know how maths work. That means he's at least going to score one in the next game. Uh, Bayern are going to win this, and I hate to say it. Uh, I mean, you've got 3-0. I'll go 4-1. Four, 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 Four one. Uh, Neuer, <laughs> Neuer's a bit. Last week, yeah. no, Neuer's suspect at the back, but this he, Bayern side is, is, is he? unbelievable. He, he um, has his moments now. He he's no longer moments. the greatest goalkeeper on earth. Oh, okay. So he's moved down to like two or three. Just looking at the table, we talk, I we said last week that you pretty much have to be perfect to beat Bayern Munich to the title of this time of the season. I can only see it being Dortmund. Oh yeah. And I still can't, not, and I'm through. still not 100% sure Bayern Munich are going to drop four points. No. I, I think that draw that Leipzig had, I think that's that's knocked them out of contention. I think seven points is just too far back. Yeah, I think also, didn't Bayern smash Dortmund this season like 4-0 or something stupid? So that I, be, think it, I mean, that, that'll be the thing, wouldn't it? I mean, again, it's if Dortmund can find a way to win that one to get the point, the gap down to one. But again, they have to be perfect themselves. They can't afford to drop any points. No, they really can't. Um, yeah, I think it's time for us to uh, thank everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please let us know what you think the results are in our comments. Let us know anything you think we need to know. If we've missed some meaningful stats out, please tell us. Uh, we're only human, so you know, be kind. Uh, but we really appreciate all of you watching, subscribing, liking, you know, tell your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your cousin, and, you know, keep us in your thoughts. We'll keep you in your our thoughts. Uh, stay well. Um, and uh, I think that just leaves it to me to say, if you're looking for detailed football analysis, you're probably in the wrong place. <laughs>